So now, Bunny. Uh, Bonito, Boncito, Boncinito, yes. Los Bunny, Bontinflas. I think yeah. I've gone through. Bunny. I think I've gone through all of my Mexican bunny <laughs> nicknames. I, I got one bunny. Oh, oh, you've got a bunny nickname, Maxwell. What's your bunny nickname? Bunny Spider Man. Bunny Spider Man. Okay, Spider-Man. that you know, not the subtlest thing, but you know, I'll, I'll accept. How, how about Spider Man? <laughs> Spider, yeah, spider bunny. bunny. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a good one. Yeah. Or or bunny man. Or bunny man, yeah. We are going to start off this week's episode of the podcast by finally finally talking about a new story that I have been sitting on for quite a long 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 time. And I've been sitting on it because I wanted the time to really focus on the story. Like I could have mentioned this like two weeks ago, but I but I didn't. Ha- I already had a full episode of the podcast. I didn't have enough room yeah. to really stretch out with this story. I, I, I it, literally, honestly, literally, this is the feel good story of the year. All right, possibly the. And I wanted the time and space to really discuss this in depth. Okay. So, so. The story comes to us from BBC News. Okay. And that is very important because you know that it's on the level, you know? I mean, it's, 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 come on, it's the BB freaking C. It's not the Daily Mirror or Fox News. Yeah. It's stuffy, serious, unfunny, boring ass British dudes. Yes. So, so you know the story can be trusted. So. This particular story comes from Mozambique. Okay. Home of, I'm assuming, Mozambiqueans. Uh, I believe that's what they're called. Also in Mozambique. Just just not uh, speakers. Yeah. They don't yeah. like that. Yeah. Home of Mozambiqueans oh, don't, don't and, like and other Mozambique things. I don't know. But... The police in Mozambique are warning bald men. Yes. Bald men have been warned because witch doctors have been telling people that the head of bald men contain gold. Yes. So far, five men have been killed for their body parts this year. Now, this Crazy ass story is on top of another story that I didn't know about concerning albinos. Apparently, African witch doctors also believe that people who are albino, their body parts contain magical properties. So really? apparently, I mean, so apparently between 2014 and 2016, at least 18 albino people have been killed and five people have been abducted so basically if you're a bald albino living anywhere in africa you better write your will i'm a bald albino because you're you're basically the moment you look out your window you're you're going to be killed interesting fact about albinos because i had a character once who was an albino so i did some research um the idea that that albinos live shorter lives. Have you ever heard that? Yes. That is not really true. They live, they really just lack pigment and that's all there is. So they don't really, what skews the numbers a bit is of course they have a higher rate of skin cancer. Yeah. So that makes it seem like they live shorter lives, but it's like just don't don't get skin cancer, don't do that. I imagine if you if you're reading the Twilight series and you finally get to the last Twilight book, finally Edward lets Bella know, okay, I'm not, not really a vampire, I'm just an albino. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't go out in the sunlight and all that sort of stuff. Personally, I know a lot about a, a lot about albinos. Let me tell you about albinos, okay? Yeah. Albinos have long beards and they and in the beards are a bunch of rubber bands. Albinos yes. mostly wear Hawaiian shirts 
they dress like uh, Nintendo characters, and they're always doing the Mario. Swing <laughs> your arms from side to side. <laughs> they also have a secret language. No one else yeah. gets that. Yeah. A lot of albinos are successful. For example, there's a lot of albinos out there that are captains. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like Cap, no, like Captain, Captain Lou, Lou Albino. Huh? Yeah, he played Mario in that stupid show that you oh. kids were obsessed with. For oh, you, oh, time. you went, you went all the way around. Oh, Captain Lou Albano. No, he's Albano, not yeah. an Albino. See, oh, I got mistaken there. I got mistaken. <laughs> I thought he was Captain Lou Albino. But See, no. I, I didn't really catch on with the Mario thing. Yeah. My kids were obsessed with that stu- with the Super Mario Brothers Super <laughs> Show. It's a really horrible thing to watch. It's so bad. It's so so very very bad. Well, all I need to know is Captain Lou Albano is in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so bald men's heads contain gold, which is interesting. I you know what else I've heard? Military style buzz cuts contain wheat. <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Well, so that's where everybody and also, the weeds. and also, heads so with weeds. long hair contain double A batteries and those Taco Bell tacos where the shell is a Dorito. <laughs> yes, that is all. That's called science. So this story makes so much sense to me, and let me tell you why it makes so much sense to me. Because this story answers a ton of questions that I have always had. For example. Telly Savalas. Yes. People thought he was attractive. Yes, he was quite which is a odd cons- at the time. Yeah, which is odd considering considering the fact that he looks like an like an ugly New Jersey dog. Yeah. Like he, like he just- might have been been like the sexiest man of the year. Who does that this time, right? People does that the sexiest man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he might have even been the sexiest man for the years he was on Kojak. Yeah, like it, like imagine like an ugly dog, but then imagine an ugly dog acting as a stereotypical New Jersey man. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like a, it's like an ugly dog, but then the ugly dog is like, woof, baby, and smoking <laughs> a cigar and stuff. I don't know, man. To me, just looking at him, he always looked like. He smelled like really bad cheese. Yeah. You know, yeah. just like, the, like I can't actually smell him, obviously, but yeah. he looked like he had that smell. Yeah. So I always wondered why people thought Telly Savalas was attractive, and now I know why, because he had gold in his head. Yes. This also explains why The Rock's film career has been so successful. Because even even if the movie bombs like Baywatch, it's okay because the star of the movie has a head full of gold. Yes. So that makes sense. It's interesting that makes because a lot of sense. Yeah, it, it's interesting. The Rock, like I've been I've been looking back at old like wrestling tapes and stuff like that. Yeah. And the rock. I'm so glad that he's in Hollywood because his entire persona back in like 1998 and 1999 and 2000 was I'm a cocky son of a bitch who sexually harasses everyone. Yes. Yeah. Like looking back at the rock back in his heyday, he was like a walking sexual harassment machine. Who's, whose basic like thing was just misogyny. Yeah. 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 Like the rock and, couldn't like, exist like, now. Like if anybody was gonna make it if anybody was gonna make it out of out of wrestling to be a legitimate actor, it would be the rock. Because that motherfucker really? just exuded thinking... goddamn charisma. That's weird, because I always thought if there was ever going to be one person who was going to make it big, it was going to be Headbanger Mosh. <laughs> I thought, oh man, you know who's going to be the, the biggest sex symbol in the world? Crash Holly. 
I don't know. I I I think I thought uh, Scotty Too Hotty was a contender. Scotty Too Hotty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because man, could he worm? Yeah. <laughs> so bald guys, we need to mine Vin Diesel immediately. Yes. We need to mine, or at his- least secure the mining rights. Yeah, yeah. We need to mine Vin Diesel immediately. Also, this isn't a joke, and this is really in no way related to the whole uh, to the whole bald guy thing. Bruce Willis is an asshole. Yes, I was just I was asking people at work, "Can you name some famous bald people?" And when they said Bruce Willis, I said, "You know what? I'm just going to write this down. Bruce Willis is an asshole." Not related to the rest of the story. I just want to <laughs> take, you know, anytime I can say that Bruce Willis is an asshole on the podcast is time I want to take. You know? I mean, but what what talk show was he on with the Trump hat giving oh, I, yeah. a, a perfectly a perfectly good frightening Trump supporter look. Yeah. You know, just like yeah. Oh yeah, you're claiming you're 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 one of them. You know, you're really just Yeah. Now, now before we get into any of the regular features, before we before we continue with the podcast, I want to touch a wee bit on some some old bits of news because we took a week off, which made it hard to comment on Trump's ridiculously quick news cycle in a timely fashion. Oh my God! No, what? I, I, I we we can't even get. Like, like people say, Trump is good for comedy. Trump sucks for fucking comedy, because by the time he does something stupid, to the time that we record, to the time I get it out, it's old. Yeah, it's he's like, like he's Kofi already should have been fucking huge. He, he's already yeah. done ten more stupid things. Yeah, he's he's done like ten or fifteen more stupid fucking things. Yeah. Like, I, I recently saw an SNL cast member on some late-night talk show, and they were talking about how difficult it is to be on summer break because so many things are happening and you want to cover them, yeah. but you can't because you don't have the show. Like, I, I feel, I really feel like Stephen Colbert and, and uh, Seth Meyers and stuff you know, they take, like, two weeks off, and that happens to, of course, be the two weeks when a million things happen. Yeah. So then you come back, and it's so difficult for them. Like, I'm really feeling them right now. So so they're, they're you know, scandals are coming two to three scandals a week, and it's it's difficult oh, yeah. to, to catch up with things. So there are some, some bits of news, small news, old news, that I may or may not have missed that I wanted to cover. Number one, uh... On Sean Hannity's show a few weeks back, Eric Trump, the bad Twilight cosplay-looking Trump child, yes, uh, he had an interview with human anal wart Sean Hannity, where he <laughs> said, where Eric Trump said that the people who are attacking his dad, quote, aren't even human. Yes. And I, for one, am excited to not be human. Bunny, what do you want to be? You don't have to answer now. Take your time. I already know my answer. I'm going to be a mongoose. You're going to be a mongoose? Okay. I, I would I would have to be a monkey. Okay. But, but like a gibbon. I'm either going to be a mongoose or a platypus. I'm a goose. That was going to be a goose. Platypus is a good yeah. one. Yeah. Jenny, what would you be? I'm a bat. Oh. What animal would you be? What would it be? Just yeah, in general? Since, since Eric Trump said we're not humans. Oh. What what animal? I would definitely be a crow. Crow. I've always wanted to be a crow. Yeah. Do you want to are... be a crow or do you want to be a crow? <laughs> there's two. You there's two. Or do you want to be like with white face paint in the rain somewhere? No, no, no. A... Uh, that's supposed to the, be New York City. The bird crow. A bird crow. Uh, okay. Yes. Crows are awesome. Yeah. They live in families. Yeah. They have parties. Yeah. 
Crows have yeah. birdies. Hello. They have no real natural predators. They'll eat anything. And the best thing, they can fly. Yeah. They'll eat I would anything. Be, they're they'll like eat a, anything. They're like a pea. They're like an amber. <laughs> so, a couple she, of... A couple... Does she eat dead squirrels off the road, too? Yes. Yes. And she has no natural predators. <laughs> so, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Number one, the big news, the big TV story that everyone is talking about. Everyone is sh- shocked, still shocked about the fact that Councilman Delgado was murdered on a recent episode of Lucha Underground. What? Really? Shocking. Not really. Yes. Counts- Councilman Delgado was murdered. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I know who murdered him, but I don't want to say. I don't want to spoil anything. I'll gladly spoil the entire plot of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales later, but this is this is something serious. This is Lucha Underground we're talking about. Yes. But I don't want to spoil it. But another thing I wanted to talk about is a show, Bunny, that I'm pretty sure you've never seen, but I want to talk about it anyway. This is very important to me. This is very, very important to me. I want to talk about the Nickelodeon show Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. Yes, Drake and Josh. It was a fairly popular Nickelodeon show that aired for uh, longer than you would think. I'm seeing if I can quickly pop up the Wikipedia page. Here you go. Uh, it ran from 2004 to 2007. It had four seasons and also two uh, made-for-TV movies. It featured a very, very, very young Miranda Cosgrove, who apparently is still around and doing things. Um, it's it's about... A, the story wasn't new. It wasn't a new plot, but basically a single mom and a single dad meet, fall in love, and get married. And so they combine their families. Uh, there are two teenage boys with completely different personalities that now have to share a room and try to be BFFs. One of them is a skinny, attractive, popular teen who rides a motorcycle and plays the guitar and everybody loves him and he's super popular. And the other one is fat and nerdy and he works for minimum wage at a movie theater and nobody likes him. And they had, they are suddenly like sharing a bedroom and trying to be BFFs and constantly fighting. So that, so that was Drake and Josh. There was the fat one and the skinny one and they have to be yeah. best friends now that they're step brothers it, they had a really great chemistry and they seem to really be BFFs in real life. But that was 2004 to 2007. Uh, when the show left, they both went their separate ways career wise. They both went in completely different trajectories. Uh, the skinny one um, appeared in a few TV shows here and there. But one of the main things that he did, and this is surprising, for the past like decade, he has been the voice of Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Everywhere he's been the voice of Spider-Man. The Spider-Man animated shows that have not stopped playing on the Disney Channel, he's been the voice of all of those Spider-Man. Even in shows that aren't Spider-Man shows, in the Avengers cartoons, if Spider-Man shows up, it's Spider-Man. If they do a animated movie, a Marvel animated movie, it's not just Disney. If they do a Marvel animated movie and Spider-Man's in it, he's also the voice. Not only that, Lego superhero, Lego oh Marvel God. superheroes. When Spider-Man swings in, that's fucking the skinny Drake and Josh. Yeah. He's just he has constantly for like a, a decade, over a decade, been the voice of Spider-Man and that's very impressive. Every video game, anytime you've heard a Spider-Man that's not a live action Spider-Man, it's been the skinny Drake and Josh. Good for him. He has a voice that's really good for like young smarmy Peter Parker. Good for skinny Drake. Yeah, and Josh. 2004, that's probably where I missed it. 2004 is 
when I finally gave up cable. Yeah. Yeah. It was 2004. Because I was watching shit like Big Brother and Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. all right, all right. Gotta, gotta get yeah, rid Drake, of this shit. <laughs> yeah, Drake and Josh was a cute show. Uh, so the fat one... So the fat one got um got that uh that surgery what's what's the word I'm thinking of he got an the autopsy, no not the not an autopsy Bella come on <laughs> get get your head in the game Eleanor stop screaming uh a tummy no. tuck a gastro bypass yes gastric bypass he got gastric bypass surgery. He became super crazy skinny, and he became a really huge internet celebrity. He was a successful Viner. He started doing these hilarious skits on YouTube. He was all over, uh, like, Funny or Die, and Vine, and Twitter, and Instagram, and millions of followers. And he would do skits that had to do with being a Nickelodeon star. And and he was all over the place and became very, very famous on the internet. So anyway, recently, the fat one got married. Uh He got married to this model, and they had this huge, massive, expensive wedding, and like hundreds of people. And I know about this because apparently, I don't remember when this happened, but apparently I follow the skinny one on Twitter, and the skinny one wasn't invited to the fat one's wedding. Oh. And it's like, I don't care. It, like, they didn't have a falling out. It's just that the fat one became skinny and got popular and decided not to invite the teen dreamboat that he did a TV show with yeah. to his this goes beyond whether or not you have seen the show Drake and Josh. You do a TV show, a fairly successful TV show with someone, and then you get married. You invite that motherfucker to your goddamn wedding. Yeah, that's what I would not think. A fat one, and it's even worse because the skinny one learned about it via Twitter and then wrote this really depressing tweet to the fat one that said, okay, I get the message. If you don't want to have anything to do with me, fine. I'll just cut ties if that's what you want. Wow. Like, damn, that makes it worse. That makes it worse. <laughs> How dare you hurt the skinny one's feelings, fat one? <laughs> no one I refuse to remember their names. It's it's very it's a very Shatner esque kind of a move. Yeah. Yeah. That is very Shatner esque. Yes. It does. It, this goes beyond the Nickelodeon TV show. You invite your your former TV co star to your goddamn wedding. That is not cool. Mm-hmm. The skinny one is is sitting in a. I was gonna say a mansion, but there's no way he has a mansion. He. Sleeping somewhere in the Hollywood Hills, crying into his pillow because the fat one hurt his feelings. Yes. This is not cool. 